Hi. So, in previous lecture, we have discussed about uh, the blood cells, uh, which contain various immune cells. And among all those cells, we have discussed about the granulocytes. And if you remember, we have discussed about uh, neutrophil in great length. We have looked at uh, various uh, mutations, which is basically taking place in the uh, one of very uh, important enzyme known as NADPH oxidase and that result to the uh, development of uh, several congenital diseases. Okay. Then we have taken the eosinophils and we have discussed vesophils and we also discussed mast cell which is not present in the blood but it is present in various tissues. Okay. And today we will move on in same series and we will uh, first uh, discuss about uh, dendritic cells. Okay. So, dendritic cells are uh, uh, very important in immunity and uh, today you will see how the dendritic cells playing a very important role in linking between innate and adaptive immunity. Okay. So, let us begin with uh, dendritic cells. So, dendritic cells, why we call it as a dendritic cells? Because uh, there is a, uh, this is derived from a Greek word uh, dendrion, meaning branch, uh, means uh, branches of tree. And uh, due to this, uh, this uh, cell got this name when it was first uh, observed, then they found out that uh, this has a branching like structure. In fact, they were confused with uh, neuronal cells. Right? If you remember the structure of uh, neuronal cells, they have uh, two major component. One is uh, the axon, okay, which has a myelin sheath. Okay? And another uh, part is uh, having a, um, a soma or body part of the neuron which has dendrions. There are projections okay, which is like a branch. So, this uh, uh, dendritic cells uh, looks like the neuronal cell and uh, there is a one class of uh, uh, dendritic cells which I will discuss uh, uh, shortly after a while. It was uh, dis when it was discovered, then they thought that this is a neuronal cell. Okay, these dendritic cells are also known as a patrolling car. This this is uh, uh, because of their function. Okay, so these dendritic cells basically uh, perform the function of a patrolling car. They keep on scanning our uh, our. Uh, different barriers, the for example, in a skin, uh, they keep on scanning, and if there is a some uh, intrusion of some some pathogen, uh, then that will be sensed by the dendritic cells, and then they will uh, elicitate appropriate immune response, which I will explain you uh, later in this session. Okay. And they are something, if, if you want to understand, it is very simple. It is, for example, some city or some country, they have a fence, okay? And you can consider the fence as a skin, okay? And if some intruder uh, or some terrorist enter in the, in the fence, then they will, uh, this terrorist, terrorist will come with various kind of weapons, right? Like uh, various kind of guns bullet and all those things. And these dendritic cells can sense and if this dendritic cells can sense and elicitate appropriate response, then they will try to eliminate that. Okay? However, these dendritic cells, if it is not capable to uh, eliminate uh, this, uh, uh, this antigen, then what it will do, it will inform some kind of headquarter, okay, where there is a specialized uh, uh, soldiers or a specialized weapons are there, right. 
for example if the terrorist or uh, it's a big group of terrorist then that needs uh, different kinds of tact to overcome okay and if it is a uh, say a uh, uh, few terrorists but they have a very advanced weapon and all those things that needs uh, another uh, type of weapon okay in order to clear similarly these dendritic cells if they are not able to clear the pathogen what they will do they will inform the headquarter now you may think that what is the headquarter so headquarter is nothing it's a lymph node the nearest lymph node okay over there all kinds of uh, cells are available initially they will alarm also when they will see the uh, uh, the pathogen they will also induce a kind of alarm and they will try to invite the nearby immune cell in order to take care of that pathogen right however if it is not able to do it then this information will go to the headquarter that is lymph node and then over there and some sample of uh, this antigen will also go over there and then there will be a development of appropriate immune response okay so that's why these cells are uh, uh, also called as a patrolling car okay this uh, this cell was first discovered in mid 1970s uh, it is about 1973 by a very talented scientist uh, his name is ralph m steinman okay and he also initially mistaken or he was also uh, get confused after looking at this uh, structure so this cell was discovered by him and then later on he, throughout his life he characterized these cells and they he also tried to use this cells for various therapeutic and for his this remarkable work he was awarded a uh, nobel prize and there is a some uh, unfortunate story is associated with this uh, nobel prize this is a first time in uh, where the nobel prize was given after his death okay and uh, actually this uh, this nobel prize was already decided to give him but due he had a pancreatic cancer and 3 days before announcement of this nobel prize uh, he was uh, uh, he was uh, unfortunately passed away but this is this is first time in history in 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 case of nobel prize this is uh, uh, this is not uh, happened earlier uh, nobel prize were not given posthumously okay but in his case it was considered because uh, he uh, this uh, nobel family did not receive this news and uh, finally when uh, when they received this news they decided that this uh, the the prize will go to his wife and his uh, kids okay so this is a kind of exception and he got this nobel prize in 2011 along with uh, two more scientists their name is bruce butler and another is julie hoffman i will discuss about their work when i will take the pattern recognition receptor okay so this uh, uh, this dendritic cells are basically derived from hematopoietic stem cell if you remember my previous sessions and there is a two lineage of uh, uh, hematopoietic stem cell one is myeloid lineage and another is lymphoid lineage okay so this uh, dendritic cells are derived from uh, both uh, myeloid lineage as well as lymphoid lineage so uh they th these cells can come from any of these origin okay the lymphoid cell uh, the dendritic cells which is present in the in the skin uh, is known as langerhans cells uh, i think i may discuss earlier if not then uh, the cells the dendritic cells which is present in the skin we call it as a langerhans cells and this was discovered quite early Uh, quite early means uh, before this uh, 1970s okay but it was not very well characterized and it was uh, discovered by paul 
Langerhang and it is discovered in 1868. Okay? And he was also confused that this is a neuronal cell and therefore, it was not very well characterized at that time. Okay? It was discovered in the epidermis. Okay? So, these dendritic cells are present uh, throughout our system and especially the, uh, the linings. Okay? linings of the body, it is uh, it is a, a inner lining, all mucosal surfaces as well as outer lining, the skin surfaces. As I have explained to you, there is a Langerhang cell which is uh, dendritic cells and it is also present in mucosal surfaces such as uh, gastrointestinal tract, respiratory tract and they again play a very important role in defense. Okay? Here you can see a uh, 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 transmission electron micrograph of uh, dendritic cells and these dendritic cells uh, are fed with uh, uh, polystyrene beads. Here you can see the white region which is uh, denoted by P. Okay? So, this they, these cells can also phagocytose and here you can see lot of projections and these projections are basically the dendrions, okay? the projections uh, and these projections plays a very important role in, in adaptive immunity. Okay? So, dendritic cells uh, are having less uh, uh, hydrolytic enzyme compared to the macrophages. We will discuss uh, in, in probably next session about the macrophages and you will realize that uh, they have a relatively less uh, hydrolytic enzyme. There are, you know, there are variety of hydrolases present in the uh, phagosome or when and this, this get activated when there is a fusion of phagosome and lysosomes. Okay? So, in case of dendritic cells, this is uh, quite less compared to the macrophages. Okay? They have very few digestive bodies or lysosome. Uh, you know that lysosome is a place where lot of hydrolytic enzymes are there, okay, which can degradate any uh, any kind of biomolecules. Okay, so they are less. They have a poor viability uh, and uh, not so phagocytic compared to the macrophages. And uh, poor viability is not only uh, in 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 vivo; it is in vitro also. So if you isolate the dendritic cells. Uh, as you have uh, seen in, in my previous session, I told you after I, uh, during the isolation of uh, PBMC, there are very few number of dendritic cells. Okay? And these dendritic cells are quite short lived. Okay? And uh, therefore, it is very difficult to perform the experiment uh, with uh, human dendritic cells. Why? Because you need to drain lot of blood and uh, that is not practically possible. But if you want to work with uh, say uh, lymphocytes, then it is quite easy. Right? You, you, if you remember, there, there is a quite big percentage of uh, cells are present of, uh, uh, or, and all those cells are lymphocytes. Right? So, generally uh, we perform the experiment in mice and we can easily prepare these dendritic cells using some factor known as uh, GMCSF, granulocyte uh, monocyte colony stimulating factor. Okay? So, uh, I will explain you how we can make this uh, dendritic cells in the laboratory using mice. So, what you have to do, you basically take a, uh, adult mice and then you can uh, sacrifice by whatever way which is approved by your institute, by ins your institute ethical committee and then you can take out those long bones. So, long bones when I say uh, basically I am uh, trying to say the hind limbs uh, bone. Okay? And if you have some idea about the bones, uh, there is a pelvic girdle uh, which is basically a hip, uh, uh, hip joint okay? and where in this hip joint there is a bone known as femur, femur attaches with pelvic griddle. Okay? And then there is, there is a tibia. Okay? So, basically what we do, we take the mice, we uh, 
uh, we we sacrifice as per the uh, guideline of uh, institutional ethical committee and then we take out this femur and we also take out the tibia and if you cut the ends of these two bones then you can get the bone marrow a simple way if you want to do the culture of bone marrow cells you can flush this bone using very fine uh, uh, fine needle uh, and you can use the syringe okay with fine needle okay and after flushing you suspend this cells and then you can use these bone marrow cells in order to make the dendritic cells and uh, uh, using this uh, this method you in in addition you need to add uh, this gmc sf and when you will add this gmc sf and leave it for say 10 days or 15 days then most of these bone marrow cells will differentiate to the uh, dendritic cells okay and then you can use this dendritic cells for various experiments you can use it for innate immune studies you can use it for adaptive immune studies whatsoever okay so this way we can make the dendritic cells in the lab and this is very useful for conducting various experiments so basically dendritic cells they take up the antigen and then they induce the innate immune responses when i say innate immune responses it means there are two major things which is taking place in the cell one is that there will be a activation of these dendritic cells mean it will produce more cytokines more inflammatory cytokine you take the cells and stimulate with any antigen or any appropriate ligand for example lps then this will produce tons of inflammatory cytokine okay and they will also express the mhc class 2 molecules okay and some adhesion molecule okay these adhesion molecule is needed in order to establish appropriate t cell mediated immune response and subsequently b cell response as well so so this is uh, uh, when these dendritic cells are activated by some pathogen uh, then this innate this will induce the innate immune response so these are the all Im innate immune responses which i am talking and second they also uh, uh, present the antigen along with uh, one molecule which is known as mhc major histocompatibility complex to uh, to the t cells and that will basically play a very important role in development of uh, adaptive immunity as you can see the dendritic cells are uh, having a projections and these projections uh, are very important uh, for presenting antigen okay so the uh, dendritic cells basically express uh, uh, mhc class 2 molecule and that's why we call it as antigen presenting cells and besides uh, dendritic cells uh, uh, there are other cells which are antigen presenting cells that is macrophages and b cells okay and these dendritic cells also express mhc class 1 molecule and as i told you in previous sessions that mhc class 1 molecule is expressed uh, in all nucleated cells okay and uh, this uh, uh, when when this antigen is uh, uh, presented uh, along with mhc class 1 molecule then it activates cd8 t cells or cytotoxic t cells uh, the antigen which is presented along with uh, mhc class 2 molecule this activate uh, cd4 t cells and when the cd4 t cells get activated then there will be a induction of variety of uh, immune responses uh, there are various kind of uh, cd4 t cell responses cd4 t cells also we call it as a th cells and th cells uh, will uh, be of uh, various kind and uh, that depends on the type of th uh, uh, cells uh, the responses will be elicited for example the th1 induces uh, 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 responses which will basically clear 
the intracellular pathogen the, the pathogen which is residing inside the macrophages okay and the th2 responses they are playing a very important role in in induction of antibody and uh, uh, in some scenario, it is also playing very important role in development of allergy. Okay. Uh, on another hand, uh, CD8 uh, T cells, which sense the antigen along with MHC class one molecule, they are uh, they are also called as a cytotoxic T cells, and these cytotoxic T cells uh, basically play a very important role in. Uh, virally infected cells. They basically kill the virally infected cells and uh, uh, we, we can get rid of from the virus infection. They are also playing a very important role in uh, uh, against the transformed cells. Uh, basically, I want to say that uh, they play a very important role against tumor. So, if they see some, some unusual expression of uh, uh, MHC class 1 molecule and uh, if they see there is a some 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 uh, problem in presentation of antigen then these uh, uh, these cytotoxic T cells or CD8 T cells will eliminate those cells. So, this is very very nice system uh, uh, and uh, here you can see that dendritic cells are key or pivotal. Uh, in in development of a variety of immune responses. So, uh, since we are talking about the dendritic cells, there are various kind of uh, dendritic cells and one is plasma cytoid dendritic cells. Okay? These plasma cytoid dendritic cells are playing extremely important role in virus infection. Okay? And upon virus infection, these plasma cytoid dendritic cells produce a robust amount of type 1 interferon. Okay? These type 1 interferons are very important in stopping the replication of viruses, various kind of viruses. Okay? And they have a, they do not only have this property, in addition they also have a property, they have an anti-proliferative property. Some, uh, this uh, this is also used in some cancer treatment as well, okay? particularly associated with liver cancer, okay? hepatitis uh, virus infection. Okay? There is a virus known as hepatitis B and uh, during that infection, the patient received this uh, type 1 interferon. They, the, the, these type 1 interferon are synthesized and stabilized and we basically call it as a pagulated uh, interferon okay and this is used as a therapeutic okay so so pdcs produce tons of uh, type 1 interferon during the virus infection so please remember pdcs are key player in virus infection okay and how it work it basically uh, make antiviral state there are so many uh, so many functions of uh, uh, this type 1 interferon or we we call it as a pleiotropic function and this pleiotropic function is uh, creates the antiviral state in the host. Okay? In addition, they, uh, they also further enhance the antiviral state by activating a very specialized cell which is we call it as a natural killer cells and these natural killer cells are uh, a kind of uh, very important uh, weapon against the virus and virally infected cells. Okay? They play also important role against tumor cell. Okay? So, these NK cells are uh, playing a very important role in, in both virus as well as uh, in anti-tumor activity. Okay? So, these are the innate immune response. Okay, now, let us look at uh, the adaptive immunity. So, they play a very important role in antigen presentation basically that uh, the pdc's produce type 1 interferon as well as to some extent of inflammatory cytokine these together basically activate the uh, the dc's okay and then over there there will be efficient presentation of antigen they promote uh, effector cd8 t cells and uh, th1 cell uh, responses they drive uh, T-Rex cells, uh, this is uh, uh, 
um, the, the T rex is basically the regulatory T cells and there is a T70 cell uh, which plays a very important role in autoimmune kind of a thing uh, which is uh, which we may discuss later on okay and they also induce uh, uh, the induced nk t cells okay and they also produce uh, or enhance or derive the plasma cell response and they are playing an important role in immune regulation uh, via induction of uh, death or suppression of t cells okay and this uh, type 1 interferon or the products produced by the PDCs, type 1 interferon as well as inflammatory cytokine, it helps in the recruitment of immune cell at the site of infection. So, this is all about the uh, plasma cytoid dendritic cells. We can also generate this plasma cytoid dendritic cells in laboratory for conducting various kind of uh, experiments. Uh, and here we use a uh, one one factor or cytokine which you can say that which we call it as a FLT3 ligand and this ligand if you stimulate the bone marrow derived cells as I have explained to you uh, if you stimulate the cells with uh, this uh, this uh, uh, cytokine then these cells will differentiate to the plasma cytoid dendritic cells there is a one more dendritic cells uh, which is quite different which we call it as a follicular dendritic cells okay fdc and what is these fdcs basically they are kind of uh, specialized uh, antigen presenting cells and they are basically localized in uh, uh, lymphoid follicles okay and basically they uh, they play a very important role in b cell biology okay they bind and retain uh, the antigen which is uh, uh, basically linked with immune complex and present these antigen to the germinal center. You remember the germinal center or uh, primary follicles, secondary follicles. So, secondary follicles are the germinal center and basically they, they uh, enhance the, uh, the division of B cells uh, to the, to the uh, which will basically make the plasma cells. Okay? And then this plasma cell will produce uh, uh, robust amount of uh, uh, antibodies against uh, antigen. They also play an important role in uh, affinity maturation which probably you will not understand at this stage. Um, so, affinity maturation is a, pro, uh, is a step by which there will be a generation of high affinity antibody against the antigen. Okay? So, all those roles are played by the follicular dendritic cells. Okay? So, basically FDCs, uh, uh, how they play a role in, in, in maintenance of B cells, once they will bind with B cells, they will rescue this uh, bound B cells uh, from cell death. Okay? So, in that way B cells will survive and then they can, they can further divide and uh, divide to the plasma cell and then they can produce the antibody. So, they will induce the differentiation of B cells and uh, uh, memory B cells and plasma cells as I have explained to you. Okay? So, here you can see that uh, how this uh, uh, FDCs are playing important role uh, in, in B cell biology. Okay? So, FDCs, uh, I do not know, I never prepared the FDCs in, in lab. Uh, so, I cannot uh, say how to prepare the FDCs. Okay? So, in this session, I will stop and uh, in this session, I, I will sum up everything. So, I basically explained the dendritic cells and uh, then plasma cytoid dendritic cells and follicular dendritic cells. Since all these are dendritic cells, that is why I have uh, taken all these cells and these cells are playing very important role. For example, DCs are playing very important role in both innate and adaptive immune response. PDCs are playing very important role in antiviral as well as anti-tumor and FDCs are playing very important role in B cell development, maintenance, maturation and so on and so forth. Thank you.